Hi, I'm Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com. In this video, I'll show you how to apply the Biot-Savart result for an infinite wire to find the magnetic field at a given point from each of two separate current carrying wires, and I'll show you how to add those up to get the net magnetic field. The problem gives two wires carrying a current I1 equals 2 amps into the page as shown by the X, and I2 equals 4 amps out of the page as shown by the dot. The wires are 30 centimeters apart, and point P is located 50 centimeters from I1 and 40 centimeters from I2, forming a 345 triangle. Using the given XY axes, find the magnetic field from each wire, B1 and B2, and the net magnetic field, all at point P. I'll start with B1. The Biot-Savart result for an infinite wire gives us the magnitude. B1 is equal to mu naught I1 over 2 pi R1, where mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7, I1 is 2 amps, and R1 is 0.50 meters. This simplifies to 8 times 10 to the negative 7 Tesla. I remember that the magnetic field is a vector quantity, so I also need the direction, which I can get from the vector cross product I1 cross R1, or using the right hand rule. I1 goes into the page, so to use the right hand rule I point my thumb into the page, curl my fingers, and rotate my hand until my fingers are in the general area of point P. I know that B1 must be perpendicular to R1, so it can either be up or down. With my thumb pointing into the page, my fingers point downwards, so B1 must be down. Therefore B1 is equal to negative 8 times 10 to the negative 7 j hat Tesla. I'm using unit vectors because I'm lazy, and it's the quickest way to specify the vector's direction. Next, consider B2. B2 is equal to mu naught I2 over 2 pi R2, where mu naught is again 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. I2 is 4 amps, and R2 is 0.40 meters. This simplifies to 20 times 10 to the negative 7 Tesla. The direction here is also perpendicular to R2, so it can either be up and left, or down and right. Applying the right hand rule, I point my right thumb out of the page, since I2 is coming out of the page, and discover that B2 must point up and left. To get the exact angle, I notice that inside the 345 triangle gives 37 degrees between R2 and the horizontal line, and since B2 is 90 degrees from R2, there must be 53 degrees remaining between horizontal and B2. The problem also asks for the net magnetic field, and I'll need vector components to add B1 and B2, so I'll go ahead and find B2x and B2y. B2x has a magnitude of 20 times 10 to the negative 7 cos 53, which works out to 12 times 10 to the negative 7, and B2y has a magnitude of 20 times 10 to the negative 7 sine 53, which is 16 times 10 to the negative 7. Since the x component is negative and the y component is positive, I can write b2 in vector form as negative 12 times 10 to the power of negative 7 i hat plus 16 times 10 to the negative 7 j hat tesla. There's just one part left. Find the net magnetic field, which is the sum of the individual magnetic fields at point P. B net is equal to b1 plus b2, so I substitute the individual values add up the i-hats and j-hats, and get b-net is equal to negative 12 times 10 to the negative 7 i-hat plus 8 times 10 to the negative j-hat tesla. And that's it! This problem is complete. If there was a third wire, I would first find b3, express it in unit vectors, and add it to b1 and b2. The trickiest part is finding the direction of each individual magnetic field. If that's confusing, just remember to work with one wire at a time, and let the vector math do its thing. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. If this video was helpful to you, please like it in YouTube to let me know.